Or vēl ar liekam labi tā. Īs nākas, bet cieti cēm, bet tā ir jau ir šī līdz. Tad ir tam skats kaut kā nezīs, Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started. But first, Ethiopian coffee. Made in a percolator. Nice. A little cream in it that I heated up first. Heat up your cream. If you're a cream or milk in your coffee kind of guy or gal, heat it up first. Makes all the difference in the world. Oh, look. Bob Ross just painted a picture of all the people who couldn't sleep last night because you aren't making enough money. Why did I just show that? Who cares about you? Nobody. You have to care for yourself. Well, my wife does. My girlfriend does. My husband does. My kids do. Nobody cares about you. Nobody. In the end, you die alone. And I'm not being nihilistic or black pill about anything. The reality is, you have to care about you. The minute you... The minute that soaks in and that becomes you, that no one else really cares about you, you hustle a little bit more. You'll make more money. You'll get in better shape. It's a huge mindset change that you have to make. It's hard at first because you'll grieve it. You'll get bummed out that no one cares. Once you get over it, you start walking with a little bit more confidence and you start relying less on what other people do, think, or say. If you live by people's compliments, then that means you will also be depressed because of people's lack of compliments. Don't look to other people for validation. When your feet hit the floor in the morning, you are enough. You are enough. Decide who you are before you check your email, before you answer the phone, before you interact with anyone in the kitchen, out and about, in the driveway, with neighbors, at work, in traffic at the gym. Determine to be the man or the woman that you are. Strong, capable, confident, competent. Stomach in, chest out, shoulders back, head high, walk 25% faster, of course. When you are less dependent upon what other people think, say, or feel about you, your life will change. I'd love to sweep you off your feet, honey, but I don't want to take your only means of transportation. I say that every Halloween when I start seeing witches and brooms everywhere. You know, it's freaky. Do other cultures do this? Like people, those of you that are not from the United States, do you guys put like scarecrows and stuff up for Halloween? Like, Like I'm walking around the neighborhood and I just got a feeling that I was being looked at and I looked over and it was like a scarecrow in someone's front yard and it looked real. That's just weird, isn't it? Just like putting human forms with clothing on or like a witch or something like that. It's just odd. I don't know. I just got that. I just saw it in the corner of my eye and I... I was waiting for it to move. Of course, the horror movie fan inside of me is waiting for that thing to kind of just go. I've just closed my eyes again, climb board the Dreamweaver train. Driver, take away my worries of today and leave tomorrow behind. Gary Wright, 1975. I know exactly where I was the first time I heard that song. Blows my mind. Where were you the first time you heard Dreamweaver? I am sure that there are some young dudes watching this now who don't know what the bro code is. Will somebody please explain it to them? Put your answer down below. Say, the bro code is... And I'll see if you're right. But that's a thing, the bro code. 
Oh boy, here we go now. You ready? Strap yourself in, ladies. What's with women's dating site pictures when they're in a hotel room? It's like they're showing you the scene of the crime. They're sitting on the edge of a bed. The only thing missing is the luminol. Like, who wants to see that? Why is that attractive? What is going through their head? I've always said this. When you go fishing, what do you put on the hook? You put the food that you like on the hook? No, you put what the fish like on the hook. Right? Okay. So, ladies, if you were on a dating site and you were looking for a man, put things that men like in your pictures. Don't sit on the edge of a hotel bed when you were on vacation and some dude was rearranging your internal organs last night and you're sitting on the edge of that bed. Come on. Come on. No. The other thing. The last boyfriend, the last guy you dated, you know, the one who took the picture of you holding the wine glass across the restaurant table, that picture there, everyone knows that your last boyfriend took that picture or one of your last boyfriends took that picture. Don't put those kind of pictures on your dating sites. Men, if she's tilting her head, that means a dude took the picture. Ladies, you got to be a little more creative. You're getting lazy out there, aren't you? Getting real lazy. I don't want to see a toilet in the back or men don't want to see toilets in the back of bathroom selfies, sorry. No man is interested in seeing a bathroom stall in the back of the picture or an exit sign or the hotel room little hallway where you see the do not disturb sign hanging on the doorknob. Ladies, get a little more creative. You know what happens is a guy puts himself on a dating site, he might get a couple likes, a few messages. A woman goes on a dating site within one hour. She's got 75 thirsty men telling her how beautiful she is. That same woman can go out into a bar or go out anywhere and have no one say a thing to her. No wonder women love dating sites. A lot of thirsty guys out there. You're getting a lot of validation, a lot of attention from men just from a stupid picture that your last boyfriend took. It's not real life. 95% of the pics on dating profiles, women's pics, are taken by the last boyfriend. Remember the pictures, guys? Listen to me, buddy. The picture that you took of her at the restaurant when she was holding the wine glass? That picture she's now using to market herself to the next guy. When are you going to learn? No more pictures. No more pictures. I've always said this, wait till sex bots can make a sandwich. Game over. I have a great wine recommendation. It's probably my favorite red wine of all time. It's called Cannonal. It is a Sardinian red. Thank me later. Cannonal. C-A-N-N-O-N-A-U. Cannonal. Cannonal. You'll love it. If you like dry red wines, this is not a quick, this is not like box wine. You're not going to be slamming this glass of wine. You're not going to be drinking it fast. You're going to have it with some sharp cheese. You're going to have it with some brujut. You're going to have it with some olives, maybe some crusty bread and you're gonna thank me later. It's incredible. Either fully legalize pot, cannabis, or criminalize alcohol if you wanna be ethically logical and consistent. There's millions of people that today will be leaving happy hours and bars who are capable of doing infinitely much more harm on the road than some dude firing up a bowl in his house. You can argue with me all you want about gateway drugs and all this kind of nonsense. Alcohol kills more people. More wives and children get beat because of alcohol. More crimes get done because of alcohol. 
It's also said that people who commit suicide, many are intoxicated when they do that. But yet there's a bar everywhere. Everywhere. Every restaurant has a bar. What's going on? But weed? Ooh, the evil weed. That evil pot. Pothead. Druggy. Really? Really? Yeah. When was the last time you heard about somebody getting cracked over the head at an ATM because someone was high on pot? Or they needed money for pot? Come on. Let's be consistent here. Cannabis is medicine. You can't sleep, you take a Benadryl, right? That was made in the laboratory. What if you can't sleep? What if you just take a puff and go to sleep? Or take an edible, right? Think about the things that you grow that make you feel good. Or the things that are grown that make you feel good. It's not a drug, it's medicine. You have pain, you're addicted to laboratory-created opiates. I know a doctor specializes in cannabis. He actually is one of the top cannabis docs in the country. And he has helped people get off of opiates by using cannabis. It's absolutely amazing. It really, it's a miracle. But it's demonized, pothead, drug addict. Come on. That's my attitude right there about weed. I know a gal whose mom died of cancer when she was 16 years old. It was the worst thing that could happen by her account. Now as an adult, whenever she encounters a dif difficult situation, she would remind herself that her mom died when she was a teenager. All of a sudden, whatever she's dealing with becomes very manageable. She would remind herself, my mom died when I was 16. Having a tough day at work, stuck in traffic, my mom died when I was 16. Everything is perspective. I learned a lesson from her when she told me that story and that she probably probably would not even realize that I'm talking about her right now. She, in her wildest imagination, years later, she couldn't even imagine that I remember that and am telling the world it right now. My mom died when I was 16. I can handle this. Perspective is everything. There are outlaw motorcycle groups, clubs, that I have an open invitation to come and speak. Cut hair, do beard trims, act as a chaplain. And I have haircutting clients from a few of the motorcycle clubs in the Philadelphia area. However, there are churches and ministries that won't invite me to speak because I curse on occasion. Kind of interesting, huh? I hang out with people that Jesus would hang out with. The real characters, to say the least. Uh, it's probably another reason why there isn't a denomination that would ever welcome me as a minister. Denominations love to welcome me as a project, to try to change me. Attend? Yeah, sure. Donate? Sure, of course. They would welcome that. But because they consider me to be a challenge and a sinner, I'm not welcome in leadership in any way or speaking in any way. My response to that, not real good. Not emotional, it's just I'm pretty decisive. Um, when it comes to religious hypocrisy. I'm pretty decisive about things like that. I don't get emotional. I don't get loud. I don't get angry. I just kind of give the virtual middle finger. I'm not interested in your Christian club. There are Christian men who wouldn't share a stage with me because I curse and they say that I have unrepentant sin. My response? Up yours. I left your world years ago and I'm happy to never return to judgmental Christianity. It's just not a good fit. I'd rather sit beside the bed 
of a cancer-ridden one percenter whose girlfriend asked me to come and pray for him, or have a three-hour supportive phone call with a dude whose wife just left him. I have no time for bullshit. I've sat two feet from evil talking to a man who murdered both his parents and has been incarcerated since 1993. And I listened to him repent for the first time since then. But I'm not worthy to speak at a ministry. I'd rather maintain my role as chaplain at the world's largest home church called my YouTube channel. Everyone else is useless. It's weird. Once you start getting up at 4 a.m., you become part of the 4 a.m. club. And it's just part of your life. Then you see someone who gets up at 3 a.m. You start thinking, hmm, I wonder if I could do that. I actually have thought that. I know someone who gets up at 3 o'clock every day. And I thought, gosh, if I go, if I get up at 3 a.m. and I'm an eight hour a night sleep person, I need my eight hours. If I get up at 3, that means I have to go to bed at 7. And in the summertime, it's still light until 9 o'clock. And you, then you start thinking about the social implications, like meetings start at 7 p.m. When you go out at night to watch a band, that doesn't start till 9. You go out to dinner, it's like, we'll meet at 7, 7.30, 8. It's like, oh, man. And you realize how much of a party pooper you are if you're going to go to bed at 7. But honestly, in my... If I truly was going to be monastic, like a true priest or monk, I would be doing that. Because I watched a great movie, I forget if it was on Netflix or Amazon Prime, called Monasteries. Find it, just find it and watch it. It's an old, it's an older documentary about monasteries. But these guys get up at 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Some some of you would say, no way. I look at that and I go, hmm, gosh, I wonder how hard that would be to do. And I start thinking, maybe I could do that. I love getting up at four and walking around the neighborhood. I love it. I get my exercise in. I will lift weights later on today. But I got the blood flowing. I'm awake. I feel good. I get a couple hours of work in before anyone else even wakes up. Oh, crap. I'd have to go to bed at 7 p.m. That's the first thing that went through my mind. Is your wife or girlfriend a massage therapist? I'd like to know. Put your answer down below. Is your wife or girlfriend a massage therapist? And tell me about it. I'm not sure I could deal with that. And it's not because I'm not secure in my manhood or I don't trust anyone. It's just that I don't trust anyone. Or I don't trust the people that would be getting the massage. I just don't want my woman's hands all over a man. I know if I got a massage, I would want a woman giving me a massage. I don't want a man massaging me. That's just me. But is your woman, your wife, your girlfriend, a massage therapist? Tell me about it. The truly based man, also known as the man who has gone his own way, like myself, realizes that his past relationships, uh, in my past relationships with women, I was reacting to how they treated me. Everything was, I was happy with how they treated me or not happy with how they treated me. And I'm not focusing on the women. Some, some guys focus on the women part. I was focusing on me. And I was noticing happy, unhappy, happy, unhappy, kind of happy, kind of unhappy. So you end up like this, with this kind of life. A life based upon approval of how people treat you, love you, what they give to you, what they take from you. There was a time when I gave women power to define my mood and eventually my manhood. 
moods and confidence would fluctuate like the stock market, which is a big casino. Do you want to become part of an emotional casino? Things would fluctuate according to how people treated me, the boss, co-workers, neighbors. Disconnect yourself from the approval of women, men, and ladies, the approval of men, especially those ladies that are single, that are looking for validation. Do you think that the 70 men that just messaged you on the dating app really give a shit about you? All they want to do is insert A into B. That's okay, if that's what you want. But it's not because you're beautiful or virtuous. Because you can't communicate virtue via dating app. Can you? The weakest and most confusing time in a man's life is when the only barometer of success is how women respond to him. When you get to the point where you go your own way, you don't give a shit, but I'm not talking about recklessly not giving a shit, or harmfully not giving a shit, or negatively not giving a shit. I'm talking about literally just unplugging, unemotional, don't make it an emotional thing, don't be a hater. If you disconnect yourself from how other people treat you, you will be happier, you will be more content, you will get off the emotional roller coaster. Make up your mind before your feet hit the floor what kind of day you will have. Those that know me know this one thing. that There's a, a statement that I say all the time and those that are closest to me can verify this. I am known for saying it's a good day. It's a good day. I got up this morning, 4 a.m., reached over, turned on the light on the nightstand, sat up in my bed slowly, put on my socks, put on my exercise pants, my running pants, tied my sneakers, and I'm thinking, What's going through my head is, today's a good day. Today's a good day. It wasn't like, it's a good day. It was just a thought. Today's a good day. I got dressed, put on my jacket, baseball cap, went outside, and I thought to myself, it's a good day. I took a deep breath, filled up my lungs with air, exhaled. It's a good day. I didn't wait to see what kind of messages or emails I got to see who was, how many likes or hearts or thumbs up I got. It's a good day because I woke up and I'm breathing and I'm healthy. The bar is very low for contentment for me. All I have to do is wake up and be healthy and I'm good. It's a good day. Everything else, it can only go up from there. My desire for you is that you become a based man or woman for the ladies that are watching. To disconnect yourself from what other people think. Not recklessly disconnect yourself where it makes you a bitter person. Going your own way should make you happier and easier to be with carefree. Unfortunately, some people view going their own way as being negative and nihilistic. You don't have to be. When people say, you are one of those go-your-own-way types, yes, I am. They're surprised. You know why? Because I'm not negative. The truly based man or woman goes their own way, and they use that, that independence to do good to themselves, because if you're not healthy, you can't be any good to anyone else. You serve yourself, just like in an airplane when the oxygen masks drop, what do they tell you? Put it on yourself before you try to help anyone else. What a great metaphor for life. Serve yourself.
before you can serve others. If you're a man, your goal or your purpose is not to burn out for your wife or your kids and destroy yourself. How many men just like expend themselves and then she's unhappy and has to go leave the marriage? And then he said, I gave and I gave for 20 years. I did nothing but provide. Dude, you did it for the wrong reasons. You did it for validation. And no one's going to pat you on the back for supporting a wife and children. Ain't going to happen. Be good to yourself. So when bad shit happens, you know what's left? And when people abandon you and you're put into a situation where you are alone, you've been good to yourself. You didn't burn yourself out like a candle. And I'm not talking about being selfish either. But I'm not talking about being selfless and burning out and getting used by everybody. You'll be fine. Just finish your coffee and I'll see you tomorrow on the Daybreak Show. Your home of sanity, clarity, and reason. But first... Coffee.